It's time for episode 22 of Distro Delves, and you'll want to grab the popcorn for this one because we're finally delving into the ambitious Linux distro that is Pop! OS. Now as soon as I pop in the USB install drive, I get a slurry of text followed by a live session which then pops up the installer. The first two screens in the installer are the language and keyboard locale, which English pops up as the first on the list, which is good for me. The installer detected that one of my drives is encrypted and the little unlocker thing pops up if you want to decrypt it. The installer overall is very straightforward and unremarkable besides the encryption thing. Just like Fedora, after rebooting, Pop! OS drops into the same sort of welcome app where you'll connect to Wi-Fi, pick your various base settings, and create your user account. Once we reach the desktop, we'll open up a terminal and check out DF and free. A fresh Pop! install comes in at about 6.1 gigabytes with just over 900 megabytes of memory being used. HTOP was not installed by default, but it's easily installable with apt. We can see that Pop! has 111 tasks and 262 threads. Now again, just like Fedora and also Ubuntu, Pop! OS is running GNOME Desktop version 3.36. Pop! has its very own coat of paint, though it's complete with its own color scheme, typefaces, icons, and more. There's a very small appearance section under the uh, appearance section, but the only options are light and dark. And you'd have to be crazy to use the light theme when the dark one looks so damn good. There's a number of backgrounds, but to be honest, I'm actually disappointed with the default one. I mean, come on, there's lots of great backgrounds here, and this is the one that they chose? It's so, like, not bold, which is what I would expect from Pop! OS. Now, I guess the thing that everyone is talking about with this release is the new tiling extension, and I mean, it's fine. I don't really get the whole tiling thing. It's cool, and the extension is implemented pretty well, but I guess I'm one of the dozens of Linux users who doesn't care or use window tiling. I tried to break it by doing weird things I opened up all the apps here, and it's actually quite robust. If you toggle it on, set up a bunch of windows, and then toggle it off, it starts acting a little funky, but it never crashed or anything like that. And Pop ships with a pretty standard set of applications, there wasn't anything super exciting here. GNOME Extensions is installed by default, Geary is the mail application instead of Thunderbird, and some other applications come along with it like Eddy for deb file installers, stuff like that. Pop also has its own custom firmware manager and a DPI daemon to help with uh, screens on their higher end laptops. In NeoFetch we see that this is Pop OS 20.4 with kernel version 5.4 and 1759 packages installed. We've got Bash 5.0, you're looking at GNOME with Mutter, and the theme all around is just Pop. The mountable devices test did just fine with the encrypted internal drive, decrypting and mounting without root, my EX FAT USB reader mounting just fine, and the external SSD mounting just fine as well. All of the archive formats were supported, including that troublesome RAR file, however an additional codec is needed to play the audio files. Once the codec, or it's probably a codec pack, is installed, all of the media files played, audio, video files, all of them played back without any issues. In the way of app image support, there was a weird hiccup with Caden Live, where this phantom window spawned, and I actually thought the computer crashed really bad. I'm not sure what that was about, because it only happened once, I wasn't able to reproduce it, and the Etcher app image was just fine. The Flatpak ref file opened in a text editor, but the Pop Shop does support Flatpaks and Flathub out of the box. Speaking of which, we gotta talk about the Pop Shop just for a moment. It's a basically Pop OS skinned version of Elementary OS's App Center for better and worse. It's really simple, but it has a few bugs, like uh, this null app by null developer. And the descriptions for apps should live in a text box with padding and stuff, but there's clearly something wrong here. There's a little manager thingy that'll let you modify your sources and stuff like that, but it's weirdly slow. I don't really know. It doesn't really capture it in the footage, but it's just weird. And some apps have a repo version and a flat hub version, but unless they are named the exact same, you're going to find two of them in the list here, like Steam and Steam Installer. It's kind of annoying. I installed the OBS flat pack and it worked perfectly, just as it should. It auto-configurated itself and I recorded a video, played it back, everything worked great. Now hopping over to the networking section, I didn't see a way to enable Samba folder sharing on POP, but DLNA file sharing was super simple, and it seemed to work right out of the box. Network discovery for DLNA stuff worked too, as did direct connections for IP addresses. Printer support was perfect, with my printer being discovered and not requiring root to edit. Bluetooth was unfortunate, with GNOME claiming the controller was connected before it was connected. Like as soon as I added the device, GNOME was like, hey, it's connected, and the controller was like, no. 
I had to fight with it a little bit to make it work, but I eventually got it to behave. On the Geekbench side of things, PopOS and Ubuntu were practically the same on the CPU tests, with Ubuntu doing a tiny bit better on single core stuff and Pop doing better with the multi core stuff. For the GPU tests, Ubuntu apparently did quite a bit better on one particular test, which results in Ubuntu's score being higher than Pop's. Dirt is the first game we look at in the gaming benchmark section and Pop got one frame rate higher than Ubuntu with 39 frames a second on medium graphics. The gameplay was great, even on this wet track everything looked and felt good. Next up we got War Thunder which returned 23 frames a second compared to Ubuntu's 26 with the graphics settings on high. At frame rates like this, the air combat portion of the game is honestly barely playable, especially with this crummy mouse I'm using. The plane handling felt alright I guess, but in dogfights it didn't feel very... confident? I don't know, but this match was really cool though, so I'm going to use it again during the outro section. GTA 5 ran alright at 19 frames a second, which is one frame higher than Ubuntu's 18 frames. The game was fine, it played about as well as it did on Fedora, it's playable, but nothing really to write home about on this hardware. It's not Pop's fault, it's just the game doesn't run super well. It's got a good benchmark though. So remember in the Ubuntu 20.4 review when I said something like there's probably a flavor of Ubuntu that better suits your needs or whatever? Well, Pop is that. Vanilla Ubuntu and Pop OS use the same desktop, it's GNOME 3.6. They both have cool custom themes, but what Pop OS does better is with the defaults. Ubuntu is honestly pretty barren when it comes to a fresh install. You need to install additional stuff for Wine, Vulkan, and if you want Lutris, you gotta add a PPA for it. With Pop, you get all that right out of the box. That's why I used Pop in my recent install.sh videos. I didn't need to install anything additional to get the games running. Now, in my opinion, Pop OS is the ideal Linux distro for the everyman or woman desktop user. Whether you're gaming, coding, or just browsing, Pop OS is a good, stable, secure, and performant choice. Not that other distros are doing anything wrong or worse, it's just that Pop OS gets everything right, straight out of the box. The only thing I think it could improve on is the software store, but that's left up to a different group of folks, so maybe they can work together to fix the problems? I don't know. But that's a pretty minor issue when everything else about the distro is just awesome. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves, and stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because I do live stream Encore episodes where I stream from the Distro Delves box right here, and you guys can join in and hang out with me while I futz around on the desktop and play a game or two. If you become a patron, you'll be able to vote on the game I play during the streams, too. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.